Today my guest is Jesper Schreiner. We're going to hear Jesper talk about the importance of understanding why the client is doing the project and the great emphasis on the partnership between the project leader, project manager and the team. He's going to tell us about the importance of team members being willing to be led in the project. And this has all been proven, the success of the half-double approach, through a series of 16 pilot projects. More importantly for me, is that half-double works with existing approaches. So you don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You can apply half-double alongside other approaches to meet the needs of your organisation. Welcome to this episode of Implementing Best Practice in Business. We're here to help you and your organisation understand and implement global best practice to help you face the business challenges of today. Join me, Richard Farrow, CEO of APMG International, in talking to leaders and practitioners who have applied these frameworks and practices to boost their productivity. They're here, willing to share their knowledge and experience to help you learn from them so you can do the same to make you more competitive in today's market. My guest today is Jesper Schreiner. Jesper has many years of experience managing programs and projects in a range of industries. He became fascinated by uncertainties in projects and uncertainty in management, and this led him to complete a master's thesis on the subject. He's not a person that just focuses on learning. Having gained his master's, he was very fortunate to be able to test his ideas on real projects. He started work with the new Half Double Institute, where he is now a member of the Half Double Core Development Team. And he's going to tell us about his findings in that activity. Welcome, Jesper. Thank you very much, Richard. Thank you very much for inviting me to this podcast, which I've been looking forward to. Yes, but there's already a lot of guidance on project management. You know, so yes. why did the backers of, of the project feel they needed to fund the development of another approach? You know, what was their core motivation? Yeah, this is a very good opening question. And um, um, I would like to go back a little uh, in history, back to 2013, actually. So it's, it's about nine years now where a group of prominent people um, gathered and had a discussion. And, and at the end uh, of the day, they found themselves sharing a, a quite an astonishing f- uh, frustration uh, regarding the, uh, the very, very low rate of successful project. And, you know, they asked themselves, why is it? Uh, I mean, it's, it's a paradox, an astonishing paradox, because um, now we have, we have put so much effort into developing this profession over more than 50 years by now. And, and, and we have never been better educated. Uh, so, so why is it still that, 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 that only a very few projects equal to around 30, 35%? are successful. And, and, but at the very same time, they also shared the notion that there must be something wrong in the way we are doing this, something we can find. So let's go, let's, let's, let's go and look for it. And, and they took the next step, uh, gathering even more people, around 20 people, uh, and carried out a series of, of, of workshops where they were trying to, uh, focus on what are the best in class actually doing. Uh, why is it that some are successful and some aren't? And and out of those out of those workshops came an article um, with the, with the title "12 Leading Stars for Project Management." And 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 that led to the next step, uh, uh, forming a consortium of companies and the, the Danish uh, Industry Foundation, actually, and a number of people. There were universities, etc. And so, so the consortium, uh, together with the article, was actually the basis for the fund application to the Danish Industry Fund. Uh, and now to your question, what really motivated them? I think that they were um, they were also in a, kind of a sh- shocked by the you know the astonish, uh, astonishing paradox that the success rate of projects was so low. Uh, uh, but then again, uh, it must have been. A very good indication when they read the article that that people have actually find something that they could cling to, and go for. So so by funding the the, the project, um, there was a very very good chance that, that people could come up with something. Yes, but that's fascinating. So 
a group of people were able to then sort of summarise their thoughts in in a paper they published, yeah. which then led to a wider group of people with some industry funding to come together to, as you rightly say, solve a problem that the project management community have lived with for 30, 40, 50 years. I don't think I've ever read a report on project success that's got beyond the 30 to 35 percent no, success rate exactly that's that's <laughs> so so that that formed then the the establishment of the half double institute and what does half double mean well it's a, yeah it's a, it it means you know compared to a more traditional approach to a project um by by following the principles and executing the methods of half double you are able to uh, to create benefit or value impact in half the time compared to a traditional approach. And then if you use the same time, you're actually able to double the impact if you get right. the point. So, so that, that's, that's, that's what behind the title of the methodology and, and the project. So I understand, though, that it's not just about um, time and value. I think there's three guiding principles, impact, flow and leadership. Yeah, that's right. Can you expand a little upon those? I mean, what does flow mean? Yeah, I can. Uh, you know, it, flow means that instead of of, of, um, of of focusing too much on optimization, you should rather to focus on, on flow, which means make the project happen, make people perform, try to be more efficient, because at the end of the day, what counts is that you create something uh, in terms of, of impact and value. So the f- flow means focus on what it takes to do that, and, and which is why one of the most important methods here is, um, we have heard it before, but it, it's, 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 it's the way to do it. Uh, ensure that your core people are allocated at least 50% and ensure co-location, that these people are co-located, and which is also my experience from running it's several projects over the years. This really matters. This is important and it makes a difference. So who's responsible, though, for making sure these principles are followed? I have a personal view that um, project sponsors are not engaged enough in the project, that often a project right. sponsor starts a project yeah. and leaves it to others. That is How right. is a project sponsor engaged within the half-double methodology? Uh, <clears throat> well... The, the project, uh, the project sponsor or the project owner is to be far more engaged in the project, and it's not only uh, uh, to be more visible, but it's 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 I, in my view, it's more about ensuring that the decision power is there when you need it, which is a problem in more traditional setups. We all know that these project owners um, are very often they are also have a role as chair of a steering committee. And uh, you find uh, project owners being chairs in maybe seven, eight, nine different projects, which means that there is absolutely no chance for them to be to be actually focusing and 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 uh, reserving time, spent enough time on each of the project, and it, that is a problem because um, the more uncertainty you have, and we do have a, a lot of uncertainty in complex projects nowadays, and that means that. Every now and then, uh, you are at a crossroad where you need to take a decision. And, and, and we also know that, that many decisions, um, it, it, it is not the, the project manager himself or herself are, are not able to make that decision or take that decision. So uh, that partnership between the, the project leader, the manager, and the project owner is extremely important. And that's a core element of Half Double. So are they the leadership team? Uh, yeah, you could say that, um, that they form the leadership team. And that's, that's what we strongly advise that, that, um, that they do. Uh, if I may go back to the principle, you ask who are responsible. Mm. Um, and and the mo- an obvious answer to that would be, well, that's, that's for the leadership uh, to take responsibility. But that's, that's, that's not, uh, it's not only their job because... You know, half double is 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 um is not only uh, nine methods. It's a methodology, and and it's based on these. Our three core elements, uh, impact, flow, and leadership, are based on three principles, and maybe those three principles are the most important. 
because they tell you what you have to, 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 of course you have to understand it and you have to learn to live by it. So when we say stakeholder satisfaction is the ultimate success criteria, which is the, the, the principle of impact, the first core element, uh, it, it's not only uh, for the project owner and the project leader to understand and live by that, it's for everybody involved in the project. Um, <clears throat> So, so and, and you can take a, let's 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 focus on one of the other methods uh, in leadership. Uh, you know, be a collaborative leader and and have a people first attitude. So that that of course appeals to the project leader, but I, in my view, it's 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 just as important for you as a team member to make yourself easy to lead. Um, um, so so it. I think it, it, it's for everybody to feel some kind of accountability and really uh, adapt to this new mindset uh, because that's what it's all about. But, yes, but if it's around collaboration, yeah, lots of projects have, say, a sponsoring organisation yeah. that contracts with a supplier or another co- organisation to deliver something. So you have a financial contract between the two parties. Mm. So... How does Half Double deal with that commercial relationship between the um, the organisation that wants the project and the organisations that are providing it? Are you able to to rise above the traditional adversarial approach on contracting using Half Double to move to a collaboration? Oh yeah, that's a very good. Uh, now we're really becoming practical, uh, and, and that's that's a very good question, Richard. Because yeah, if, I would say, of course you need to have some kind of contract. So even if we say that, well, um, the the focus here is not on the traditional tri- uh, constraints, you know, the 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 iron triangle or the project triangle, or whatever we call it. There still needs to be some kind of constraints, but the important thing is. That should not guide you, not as much as, as the, 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 the focus and the goal of, of creating impact. So that it's, again, it goes back to that mindset. Um, so you're, it's, it's not about, you know, if, if finishing or completing your project on budget, on time and on spec. I'm not saying it's, it's not important, but it's not that important. The important is to create impact, to, to create impact, to satisfy stakeholders. That's what the important thing is. Uh, is all about that that's that's interesting one time i used to manage projects down in london docklands and one of my projects was to um convert the crypt of a church into a um into a meeting room and i was talking to the local vicar and there was scaffolding on the outside where another project was repairing the brickwork and he said he needed to fix the church spire the, the clock and he needed eight thousand pounds to do this and it would be really good to do it while the scaffolding was there so i agreed as the project manager to move some money from my project to fix the clock because it would have been nonsense to have taken the scaffolding down to then have to redo the scaffolding to do the clock and um you know he got up and, and the clock was done and he was delighted by it but unfortunately for me, he told the chief executive of the development corporation that this money had been, this work had been done, and how wonderful I was in actually supporting him in it. And of course, it was totally outside my remit. I didn't have any responsibility to do that, any authority to do that. But the chief executive congratulated me on actually using my initiative to get this work done. So I think that is about your concept of stakeholder benefit. It's the concept about flow. Um, but he did say to me quietly, "Next time, let me know." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Again, it's it's. I I see that as a good example of embracing that uncertainty, and you can't predict everything. So, uh, be a, be prepared for for the uncertainty and for situations like this, and and have the courage to 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 make a decision and go for it. But yes, but has this been proven? I mean, you know, you you spoken very eloquently about the theoretical benefits of the half double. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, have you run some pilot projects? Is there some real evidence that you can point to to say, yeah, you know, here's 
a, a project that was run in a particular way, and here's one runs half double, and the benefits are there for everybody to see. You know, can you can you back up these claims? Yes, I can. Um, uh, we we were very aware of that um, uh, from day one, uh, because uh, you know that's that's when it's become you know again not only interesting but important to to also s- try out uh, in reality whether the new methodology actually works or not. Uh, and um, you know um, part of, uh, we had free universi- universities uh, being part of the consortium also from day one. And, and they have been very, we have been very, together with, uh, we have been very focused on running pilot projects. And, uh, in the early stage of the project, we, um, we ran 16, uh, pilot projects. And, um, along with the projects, you know, we did a, a series of research studies, um, aiming at, um, with the purpose of, of, of simply collecting empirical data to, to try, uh, uh, to, to find out whether the methodology works or not. And, and we had very good results uh, in the first uh, stage of the projects, um, uh, <clears throat> coming out with, uh, with an 80% uh, of the pilot projects being, um, being, uh, being successful, f- uh, fulfilling the success criteria of the project, which was very, very good. And another interesting result was that um, 63% of the projects um, were more some successful compared to reference projects, which were uh, similar projects, but which were were conducted um, due to more uh, conventional approaches and methods. Yes, but were these were these real projects, or were yes. these projects conceived by the universities? Were these you know client organisations actually yes. coming in and volunteering yes. to yeah. do a half double project alongside a traditional one? They were. Um, as part of the consortium, uh, we had 16, you know, each of these 16 pilot projects were run in different organizations, dis- different companies. And we had 16, um, uh, mid-size, uh, companies, uh, being part of the consortium. So these projects were real projects running in, in these organizations. That's fascinating. I mean, it must have been really, interesting for you to actually see organizations stepping forward to actually run some pilot projects based on this concept and and to see the success proven in practice it was really it was and 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 of course you know it it also <clears throat> it was it was a huge job you know to to plan and organize and carry out so quite a lot of people were involved in this yeah, we, and, and that, that's why that's that's also why we needed the funds, of course. Yeah, but those organisations clearly were delivering projects before Half Double came along. Oh, yeah, yeah. they were, um, you know, had their own either traditional methodology or their own in-house approach, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, are they now moving to Half Double, or are they? Is it a hybrid in those organisations? Of some projects are using Half Double, and some projects are running a more traditional approach. Yeah, it's it's a latter, I would say, uh, because you know the question came um, from these organisations rather early. Uh, said, "Well, this is very interesting, and we are quite impressed by the results. But um, if we have to, you know, fully implement this, uh, what do we what do we do with what we already have, and um, the, the the answer is is actually uh, it's rather clear. Uh, uh, you don't have to skip or cancel um, what you all what you're already doing. Half double is indeed uh, can indeed coexist with uh, other framework standard and methodologies, and in some cases, you know, they can uh, it can even interact uh, uh, positively with. Um, other other standards and frameworks and methodologies. But if if I was a project manager in one of those pilot organizations, hmm? my mindset, I must have gone through a training or an education process to to understand the um the half double mindset, the philosophy behind it. Yeah. Um am I then do many of those people that have run half double projects go back to the old way of doing it or do they become um, disciples of half double and then want to use half double on different projects and can you 
work for a period of time on one project on half double and then go back to a di- traditional approach? I mean, is there a real change in behavior or mindset of the individuals involved as project managers? Yeah, that's right. It can be difficult, um, of course, because um, when, when, we sp- when we speak about traditional um, and additional approach to project management, we are also thinking uh, in terms of a different mindset. And it is true that if you go 20, 30 years back, you know, I was there at the time, uh, we, 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 we did not know of, of any, any, t- any kind of new mindset uh, like we have now with half double. It was a very traditional uh, mindset, you know, uh, focusing on the, 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 the triple constraints and the associated key performance indicator and all that. Uh, but I think today you can, uh, it, for me, it's not a question of either or, uh, that you either you run the traditional way or you run the, 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 the more, the, the new, more half double kind of way. Uh, you can do both and, and, and you can, uh, you can run, uh, let's say you have a construction project, uh, which is uh, relatively predictive. I would say, why? Why should you uh, split that up into short development cycles if if you are actually capable and if you can defend planning on a, a six months or twelve month basis? Well, you should do that because it's also also time consuming. Each time you have to you know you have to, to make this time out, look back, uh, how did we do and what do we have to do for the next twelve weeks. Um, so if you can, if you don't have to do it, um, uh, well, please do it the more traditional way. So I think uh, you should. Uh, the modern uh, project organization, modern uh, project owners and project leader, they should be able actually to 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 swift between different approaches uh, and use elements from uh, both the mindset and the methodology to work in a more uh, hybrid kind of way. I think that that's what the future will be about when you talk about how to approach and how to conduct and, and lead projects. Yes, but you you clearly are. I, I have a feeling about Scandinavians that it's about collaboration mm-hmm. and it's about um, what's the right solution regardless of the circumstances and what's the right solution. It's not all about me. It's about the team. You must be one of the very few people involved in a project management approach, a new project management approach that isn't saying this is the answer to all of your prayers. You know, this isn't the the next greatest thing. You know, forget everything else you've learned and you know, get on my train because we're going to sort of steam off into the future if that's acceptable <laughs> in these days of global warming. We're going to actually change the world of project management. Everybody needs to be half double. You know, you're actually taking a a hugely pragmatic view that says half double is by far the best way for certain projects, but you have to make a decision whether it's half double or whether it's a different approach. Yeah. I mean I have to thank you for being so pragmatic and so so realistic about you know what half double can do and maybe what other people ought to use a different approach. And I think as we move into, I think as uh, Antonio Rodriguez says, the project economy, mm. then being able to to see project management as being able to deliver some serious beneficial change in an organization is going to be hugely powerful and important for those organizations that need to understand that. Mm. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So... I mean, it's fascinating talking to you. I'd like to finish, though, with um, trying to pick your brains. Um, you know, a long career in delivering projects and programs, um, involved in the development of a new approach of Half Double, mm-hmm. involved in building professions through the IPMA involvement with the mm-hmm. Danish Project Management Association. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you've probably been there, seen it, and done it. So if you were looking back, you know, to your career and you were talking to a young person that's just started moving into the world of work, maybe interested in delivering, getting involved in project management. You know, what three pieces of advice would you give them? You know, what three things would you have liked to have known when you started in your career? So if, if, if I met the young Jesper, you know, at the age of 27 or something, 
Is that, something like that. Something well, like that. That's yeah. only a few years ago, Jesper. So, <laughs> Thank you for yeah, the compliment. An even younger Jesper. <laughs> well, Richard, I think this is the most difficult question uh, you've asked me today uh, because, you know, when I've been out for so long, as I have, uh, you know, it's, it's, the list is not only uh, of, of free things. It's maybe 10, 15 or 20 things <laughs> that I would like to tell myself or good advices I could give myself. But uh, I, I've thought about it and um, um, I have some answer. I have an answer for you. Um, and I think uh, the first thing, well, this is not in order of priority, but the first thing I would like to say is um, really to tell myself to be aware of the uh, Im importance of understanding and communicating the project strategic background, the purpose and, uh, you know, the goals and being able to distinguish between the three because it is so fundamental. Because if you cannot answer the question, why are we doing this project? Because if we do this and we spend money and resources on that, there will probably be something else that we that we have say, that we will not do. So why this project? To understand that is absolutely fundamental to me. And this, of course, also linked to stakeholders again. Uh, so there is a link here to half double. Um, uh, but, but let's forget half double now because, you know, I, I had, I had a com I had a discussion the other day with, with someone talking about this. And it was very simple. You say, if you are, if you want to develop a car and you think about, you are, you are a product manager in a car manufacturer, big, huge ma car manufacturing company, and you want to develop a new car. Uh, and you ask yourself, what will, uh, make my stakeholders happy, satisfied? Is it uh, this brand new car or is it something else? It will probably not be the car. I think that would be uh, most likely that would be second priority to the stakeholders. It will probably more be something uh, gaining a new market share or increasing the turnover or whatever it is. So, so being fully aware of that, that's, that's crucial. That's fun so fundamental to me. So that's the first thing. And I wasn't aware of that when I started off, uh, you know, way back in the eighties. Uh, the second thing is, uh, and that is, um, that's, that's really something I'm very, very happy about, uh, when I saw that as one of the nine half double methods. And that's, you know, the importance of allocating the core members of the project team and ensure that they are, these people are co-located. It sounds very simple and it's, there's no rocket science here. It's been out there for years, but nevertheless, it is extremely important. That you focus on that. So, so that would be my second advice. And the last one, the, we have actually briefly discussed that uh, earlier during this interview. It's about the project owner or the sponsor or whatever we call this person, uh, because it simply doesn't work. What we have been witnessing over the years, you see these. You, there are people having this role, but they don't live up to it. Uh, they don't fulfill it because they simply don't spend enough time. Uh, on 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 uh, on on uh, practicing this role correctly, and it's about decision making. It's a, about forming a partnership with the project leader, so that you are uh, able to make the proper decision. Maybe not make. Let's forget about wrong or right decisions, but make decisions because mm. it that's that's so it's so important. And with, with all the uncertainty that's around projects today, you need to make decisions every day. So that would be my, my third advice to the young Jesper. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you to the ever young Jesper for sharing his views with us. A fascinating conversation, Jesper. Many, many thanks for your time. Many thanks for sharing the insight behind the Half Double Institute and the value that people can get from it. And thank thanks you. again for inviting me. I enjoyed it. Thank you for listening. We're always keen to hear your feedback and suggestions for future episodes. You can find all the information in the show notes below. Please visit apmg-international.com to find out more about our accredited training and the certifications that support them that are related to the topics discussed in this series. I hope you've enjoyed today and I look forward to you joining future episodes while we continue our exploration into best practice and the benefits it brings to global business. Thank you.